Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and today I really promise that this is going to be about the tuning choke in the power supply of vacuum tube amplifiers. So as you know, there's two big categories of uh, filters of power supplies, choke input and capacitor input. That's the black and white, black cat, white cat way of looking at it. But when you look at the cats, you know that, that even the white cats usually have some, some other colors in them and the black cats, are, most of them are, are not, not fully black. And when you just count a, a million cats, a pure white and pure black is just very, very few among them. The same thing applies, the black cat, white cat principle applies to, or color cat, to these filtering mechanisms as well. So basically, uh, when you have a choke input supply, it means that a coil is going to suck up all the output from the rectifier. And when that happens, a coil does not ha have a pull. It does not have an electromotive force behind it, unlike a capacitor. Because a capacitor, it charges up and it pulls current like crazy. Uh, a choke, it doesn't pull current. When there's voltage, it soaks up the voltage and it lets a, as much current pass as its DC resistance allows. So it, it is not sucking up anything, it's other way, it's resisting current. And the more current goes, the more it's resisting. No, no guys, no, 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 don't overload me. So chokes act as an overload protection because they slow down the current uh, demand. So that's why uh, if your amplifier is built on a strategy that it requires loads of current, then a choke input supply is a really bad idea because it won't allow your circuit to behave to its fully po full potential. However, if your circuit is optimized for voltage draw, which means that you have output transformer, on your power tube, which every tube amp has, and you have choke loading on your input stages, then all this amplifier needs to get it going is to keep the voltage stable. And, uh, and, and the current demand is uh, kind of secondary, provided you have a high enough voltage and you are not stressing the fudge out of your circuitry. Uh, which happens in almost every commercial tube amplifier because they just crank them up to get the highest amount of power output possible from them and that means that they're going to introduce big current swings and, and then it's overtaxing the uh, power supply and it's going to give you bad results if you have choke input supply because it's not designed to handle that kind of thing. So that's why commercial amplifiers have input capacitor which pulls current from the transformer and then it can supply that current from that capacitor reservoir to the current hungry stages. So now going back to the tuning capacitor, what on earth is that? So in order for a supply to behave as either a capacitor input supply or a choke input supply, it needs to have work within a range. What, what does that mean? Uh, how to say it best? It's best if we approach it from the point of a capacitor supply. So let's say we have a, a pi filter supply and the input capacitor is a nice big 500 microfarad capacitor. So when we have 500 microfarad capacitor at or C1, at which receives the signal from the rectifier, then it's going to throw tremendous charge to charge up when the duty cycle of the rectifier tube and of the transformer, it allows that current draw. And then all the downstream elements, downstream filter elements, here I have double pi filter drawn, they will draw from the capacitor. So everything you get, you are taking out from the bank of the capacitor. Uh, 
Now, if we are lowering the capacitance of that capacitor, so instead of 500 microfarad, now let's cross it out and put only 100 microfarad. That's much smaller, right? So what it will do? It will draw current with less vehemence over a longer part of the duty cycle of the rectifier and the transformer. So it will stress out your power supply less than having a much bigger capacitor. But it will still function as a capacitor input, so it will purely define the voltage that your B+, plus, that, that's, that's what it's called, the high voltage is called the B plus voltage, the capacitor will define the B plus voltage. And when we are talking about capacitor input supplies, the, uh, the voltage provided by a capacitor input supply is basically the transformer's output voltage times 1.41, roughly that. So like you have an output transformer, let's say it puts out 300 watts, then you need to multiply it by 1 point, times 1.4, so that's roughly like 420 volts. That's what your B plus will be when you have a purely capacitive uh, input. And, uh, and also in practice, you have to deduct the, the voltage that the rectifier drops. So you have a 300 volt supply, let's say times 1.4, 420 volts. Uh, if I calculate right, I'm really tired out of my mind, so maybe I gave you something else. But anyway, get a calculator, punch it up. And if you add the rectifier to it, let's say a 5AR4, it drops, let's say, 15 more volts. So you will end up with a 505 uh, volt final B+. Plus. So that's how you can calculate what will be the voltage. And, and when you have a 100 microfarad input capacitor or 500 or 1000 microfarad, it will be roughly the same voltage. As you up the capacitance, the voltage will be slightly higher, but the difference between using, let's say, a 500 microfarad or a 50 microfarad, just two or three volts, that will be the difference. The 500 will be like two or three volts higher than the 50, but uh, it is the same thing, 99 percent plus within the same range, right? It's defined by the capacitor. What happens when you start dropping the capacitance below 50 microfarad? And so what happens is that the voltage uh, is going to drop. So it, it won't be able to behave as a fully capacitor input and it won't be able to supply that times 1.4 voltage. So how much will your voltage drop? So as you decrease the capacitance, the voltage drop, 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 to a degree when you have no capacitance at all, then what we get is the output voltage of the transformer times 0 0.9. So it will drop to the 90% of the voltage that we get. So in the case of a 300 volt secondary transformer, we get 270 volts. So if you have a choke input supply uh, with the same transformer, same power transformer, you get 270 volts and if you change it to a, a, a capacitor input supply, you will get 520 volts with the exact same transformer. So that's one thing, that's why what you notice that because there is no capacitor there, to store uh, the charge, to keep up uh, the charge always at the highest point. And that's why it, it has higher voltage, because when the, the peak of the duty cycle of the, of the transformer's output happens, that's when the, the capacitor charges, and then it keeps that charge stored. And that's what it will feed down the stage. And this is nice because you have very high voltage coming out, right? But the problem is that this charge that is 
that is gotten and that voltage that's stored into that capacitor that happens only at the fraction, at the tiny fraction of the duty cycle of the transformer, it's going to arrive in burst, like <laughs> kind of like that. Uh, it, it's kind of like trying to force feed the geese, you know, instead of like, you know, eating naturally, slowly, like just <laughs> force feed in bursts. Of course, the geese grow fat and you get foie gras and it tastes great, but uh, it, what works for geese is might not be your ultimate uh, desire in audio. Uh, so, what's happening? As in my previous videos, I explained that uh, um, having a purely choke input supply has its uh, difficulties. One of them is operational stability. You can get around that, but then it, it will get more complicated. So anyway, we talk about it. It's not a first timers build. Uh, the, the purely choke input supply is for master builders. So don't go there. And, and usually that's something that you almost never see in commercial equipment. Uh, th there are very, very few of them. One of them is the Hagerman Violin Phono Stage. It is a choke, it's a double choke input supply. So each channel has its own choke input supply. Guys, check that out. So anyway, that was just a segue uh, about mastery. But what you can do for yourself to keep it safe, it's, so it's kind of like uh, split your cake give from your cake, but have your cake as well and eat it and have a great meal out of it, is to put a capacitor there that doesn't make it behave like a full capacitor input supply. So it will not give you that 1.4 times voltage to, to behave that <laughs> I'm just charging at, at like that, that 5% or 0.5% of the duty cycle and we are getting those gobs. But but something that if you have a capacitor, and this happens when you drop that C1 below 20 microfarad. It also depends on the current and voltage as well, but just give you a general value. Anything above 20 microfarad for the first filter position will make it work as a fully capacitive input supply. And if you start dropping below that, then you start go growing towards a choke input supply and then that C1 behaves as a tuning capacitor. So basically then you have a choke input supply with a tuning capacitor. And there what happens is that the, the tuning capacitor is unable to filter the ripple of the, of the, uh, of the in incoming current and voltage that's being dumped on it. So it's unable to store up the charge. So what you will see with the tuning capacitor that with the duty cycle of the, of the transformer and, and the rectifier, that the voltage on that tuning capacitor is going to fluctuate tremendously. And you have like hundreds of volts fluctuating over it. And when you have a, a, a capacitor input supply, then you have just a few volts ripple, maybe one, two, five volt max, that's it. But when it's talking about the tuning cap, you will see hundreds of volts riding on it. So basically, your choke after the tuning capacitor is going to see hundreds of volts uh, fluctuating up and down and it will be allowed to operate at, at, at the full potential of a choke that is storing up voltage and behaving as a, as a voltage supply. And, uh, and because of that, the, your, your transformer and the rectifiers uh, for most of their duty cycle, they will be able to supply your supply with voltage and current. And, and you will have a largely uh, choke input supply that's dominated by the choke. So here, when we are decreasing the C1 in the supply, then we are making the choke dominate the supply. And when you are increasing the capacitor, you are making the capacitor dominate the supply. And, and I think for me, the best solution is to have the two together, to have a, a choke, but to have a tuning capacitor. So keep that capacitor low. Uh, and then that allows the supply to behave largely as, as a choke input supply, and which means like steady current draw and the ability to 
uh, feed voltage into the system and, and not be a current driven supply. So I hope that this somehow helps to clarify things maybe just made things worse i don't know just type in the comments uh, maybe i can do a better video to clarify clarify things i don't know but hopefully this this helped a bit uh, so thank you for watching have a great time bye bye